Good morning, my name is Emily and I am honored to be your rector. I am grateful for the opportunity to join together in worship this morning. My heart swells with joy when I think of you and I remember you always in my prayers. As we begin our prayer this morning, make sure to light a candle or two and have a bowl of water ready for each Sunday in this season of Easter, we will renew our baptismal vows. It is perhaps the best time ever to remember that the season of Easter is a great 50 days long, decidedly longer than the season of Lent, which is only 40 days. Thus, we will celebrate every day that life defeats death and that Jesus Christ has defeated death once and for all. This is the second Sunday of Easter, and our opening hymn will be Hail the Festival Day, which is one of those um, hymns that we typically would sing with great fanfare, with trumpets and brass if we have them, certainly with splendid um, full organ. Um, so it might seem a strange choice for us to begin our worship today. But I say it's a great time to sing Hail the Festival Day. For as we'll sing in the refrain, Christ arose, Christ is risen, and Christ is breaking and in fact has broken the kingdom of death. Those words are true as ever today. And we are so blessed and grateful to Dr. Ed Mackey Schramm for playing for us. Let us sing.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, in whom we know the power of redemption, you stand among us in the shadows of our time. As we move through every sorrow and trial of this life, uphold us with knowledge of that final morning when, in the glorious presence of your risen Son, we will share in his resurrection, redeemed and restored to the fullness of life. In his name we pray. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He is not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say the psalm together in unison. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures every, evermore. Our second reading is from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, 
even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more previous than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not, do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the temple authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you receive the sin, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you 
may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I was laughing to myself yesterday morning around, it was around 10 o'clock in the morning, and my boys, without even asking if they could go outside into the yard, just burst outside. They clearly had noticed that the sun was shining and it was no longer snowing as it had been for the previous three days. And they just burst out there um, and they picked up their bikes, which had been lying dormant on the grass for the previous three days. And they started biking and running around the front yard. And as they did, um, I thought to myself, ah, there they go, bursting their three-day prison. Now, those words might sound familiar to you, and you know me, um, that hymns and parts of hymns just tend to um, fly around in my brain all the time. And in fact, that is a phrase from the hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide. This joyful Easter tide, away with sin and sorrow. So the refrain of that hymn includes these words. Had Christ that once was slain, now burst his three-day prison. Our faith had been in vain, but now is Christ arisen, 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 arisen. And I also thought, would that confinement were only three days? Would that confinement were only three days? And here we are in day 30 something of staying at home in order to protect one another for which I am 100,000% in. And it's hard, isn't it? It's really hard in so many ways. And I just think time and time again throughout this season of confinement that whatever was already hard is a lot harder now. Um, and I was thinking about our epistle from First Peter today as well. For this one, as with basically all of the epistles in the New Testament are written from an author who is physically distanced from the community to which he is writing. The community with whom he has lived and breathed and longs to return. Um, the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians that my heart swells with joy when I think of you. I remember you always in my prayers. I am yearning and longing and hungering to get back to you. That is the context for, um, for each of our epistles. And it strikes me, it just kept leaping out to me in this portion from 1 Peter, that the author is underscoring the need to rejoice. And this thought that the current confinement, the current sufferings would actually yield more praise and glory and worship of God than less. That the current confinement and suffering would yield more praise and glory to God than less. And my heart feels heavy. My heart is tired. Staying at home is simple in a lot of ways and really difficult in a lot of, in many, many other ways. And I wonder if your heart is heavy as well. How do we follow these words from 1 Peter in lifting up our hearts and rejoicing, even as, they, as this author puts it, with an indescribable and glorious joy? What does that indescribable and glorious joy look like right now? What does rejoicing look like right now? What does it look what does it look like to lift up our hearts and to help lift one another's hearts? I recalled then a poem by George Herbert, who is an Anglican priest writing in England some time ago. 
And he has a poem that is about this very question of how do we, how exactly do we lift up our hearts? Do we also rise and rise up throughout our season of Easter? He writes this, Rise, heart, thy Lord is risen. Sing his praise without delay, who takes thee by the hand, that thou likewise with him may rise. That as his death calcined thee to dust, his life may make thee gold and much more just. That Jesus' life would make ours not only dust, but also gold. I hear an echo in this poem with First Peter, that the genuineness of our faith is what is gold. The genuineness of our faith being more precious actually than gold, though perishable is tested by fire. And our faith is being tested right now. I don't believe in a God who gives us tests just for the sake of it. What I'm talking about is that it is a struggle. That life day in and day out is just hard right now. And we are in that sense struggling and being tested as though um, by fire. And our faith is what is more precious than gold. Herbert continues then, what should we do? He continues, awake my lute and struggle for thy part with all thy art. Thy cross taught all wood to resound thy name who bore the same. His stretched sinews taught all strings what key is best to celebrate this high day. Consort both heart and lute and twist a song pleasant and long. Or since music is but three parts vied and multiplied, oh, let thy blessed spirit bear a part and make up our defects with his sweet art. Life is hard right now, and all of the defects of our personal lives, our family lives, our community's lives, our city's lives, certainly our nation's lives, are risen to the surface and it is very easy then for our own hearts to be heavy but we are to find ways to lift up our hearts and to find whatever we can maybe it's a lute <laughs> maybe it's an organ maybe it's a piano maybe it's writing a letter maybe it's picking up the phone Maybe it's baking something. Maybe it's simply getting from morning through night. Doing whatever we can and finding joy in that. For our joy is based not in what we can see, but in what is unseen. And that is our living hope through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, 
in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I invite you to take your water, touch it, maybe sprinkle it on somebody who's with you. Mark yourself with the sign of the cross to, uh, uh, to renew your, your baptism. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given all of us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we know that you are with us and that you unite us through your Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Christ Church and every congregation throughout the world, that we give you praise and place our trust in you, becoming beacons of hope, faith, and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our church, Michael, our presiding bishop, for Bonnie, our bishop, for Emily, David, and Anthony, our priest, for Chip, our deacon, and for all who minister, fortify them to be faithful pastors, to persevere in prayer, and to build up the family of God in new and creative ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in authority, especially Donald, our president, Gretchen, our governor, Michael, our mayor, and leaders throughout the world. Help them to make sound decisions to best secure our safety and the future of our planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For first responders, for doctors, nurses, and hospital staff, for service industry workers and those forced to work as their community shuts down, for those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of wages. We pray especially for Anna, Michael, Joe, Shauna, Conceda, Ryan, Anna, Mark, Rosemary, Stephen, and the Greenfield Healthcare employees. Keep them safe, grant them strength and hope, and provide for them daily bread and wage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those directly infected with the virus, for those at high risk, for those in quarantine, for the marginalized, for the poor, and for all who suffer in any way, especially Pat, Booker, Barbara, Jocelyn, Harold, Ellie, David, Chip, Charles, Emily, Elisa, Betty, Monique, Joe, Carl, Lynn, Jason, Mimi, and Carol Ann. Help them recover in good health and restore them in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gifts of joy, wonder, and love, which we savor and celebrate, especially in times of struggle, we pray for those having birthdays this week, especially Amal and those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the communion of your church 
and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal. We remember especially the Reverend John Albrecht, all who have died from COVID-19, and those we now name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Hello, I'm Roger Bassey, your vestry representative, and Mary and I are sequestered in our house much the same way you are. But I want you to know that your vestry is still working hard. Under the leadership of Lisa Jones, we are meeting regularly in the wonderful world of Zoom. We are doing our best to conduct church business, moving the church forward, and one of the first items on our list was to make sure that our wonderful staff has been kept intact and that we are supporting them. And they are just doing a fabulous job. We are so proud of them. We also are watching the projects that we have planned this year. And under the watchful eye of Desmond Jones, both our floors and our bell tower are, being, are moving forward. A little slower than what we had planned, uh, but they are still on target to go this year. It is important that we have kept our pledges up to date, and I want to thank everybody for doing that. You can send a check as a pledge, or you can pledge online to keep that all moving forward. It's important for us to always stay in touch with ourselves and to communicate. And to do that, we are emailing four or five times a week to everybody, we also have the Shepherds program, which is making phone calls to their flocks. I'd also recommend, because we're all at home right now, that you pick up the phone and give a fellow parishioner a phone call. We know they're not doing anything at home, so they would love to hear from you. So go ahead and give somebody a call and surprise them. We also are watching for Bonnie to give us information about what to do going forward. We know that May 10th was our target date, um, but my, my guess is that's going to be moved back a little bit. Um, don't forget after the service to join the virtual coffee hour. It starts at 1130 and you can sign up on going to our email from Friday and uh, click into the virtual coffee hour to say hi to everybody. And lastly, on a personal note, I want to thank you for your prayers. My daughter is one of the first line defenders. She's an ER nurse at St. John's and all the prayers and every prayer that you say helps. So be safe, be strong, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you, Roger. And thank you, Chuck, for reading. Thank you, Ed, for playing today. And let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and our labor unto the Lord.
And now let us lift up our hearts and pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar in your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day. And remembering particularly our beloved Christ Church, we long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and for all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and particularly for all the blessings bestowed upon each one of us. Let all of us who desire communion now pray together. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you come into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom and guide us in right pathways for your name's sake. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the flourishing of your children and the growth of your kingdom. In your triumphant name, we pray. Amen. May Christ, who brings defeat, who brings out of defeat, new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And may the blessing of God creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Mm.